Hello everyone, welcome back to the shop. My name is Rose Martinez, and today we are going to be working on a sushi knife. So I'm gonna be attempting to make a semi-traditional style Japanese yanagi, which is a knife that is used for making sashimi or sushi. Um, so basically deboning fish. It's gonna be a little bit of a challenge. I'm gonna try and forge very, very close to my initial parameters because I want this to be a, a forge finish so it'll have that, uh, that black scale on the top and then it'll be nice and shiny on the bottom. This is a custom order, so I have a design and um, I've been given a little bit of uh, artistic freedom with it, so I'm gonna do my best to make it to parameters and do the best I can. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy. So if you can't tell, it's a little toasty in here. It was 98 degrees in this shop at the moment, and it's only about 85 outside. It shows you that the forge gets a little warm in the summer. <laughs> Anyways, we have our rough forging complete. I think it came out, came out, came out pretty good. I have a nice straight blade. Um, I forged it nice and semi-thin up there. I didn't want it to be too thin so I can keep that forge texture up there. And I also forged in my bevels, so I have a, a thinner edge than I do a, a spine. I just need to cut that off. Need to grind down the tang, and we will have our grinding stage next. So I have my profile fully ground in. Um, I also went in and fixed up the tang so it's nice and clean. Uh, it has a little bit of a shoulder right here, which will help me down the road in the handle process. I have the edge and the spine all flattened out so they have a really nice hard stop, which is something that I've seen on a lot of Yanagi's uh, online. So now I'm going to go to back to the grinder and I'm gonna start putting my bevels in. All right, so this is a bevel grinding jig that I made a few weeks ago. Um, and basically what it does is it keeps a constant angle for establishing bevels. And then you just kind of bolt the blade down to the, the edge. And then there's also another screw back here that sets the angle down here and then establishes your bevel here. And you just use that and grind along the edge and get your bevel set. Okay, so I got my bevels fully roughed in. I brought them up to a 220 grit on the belt sander. So they currently have that belt finish on them. I do have just a little bit of that forge finish on there. I'm gonna try to maintain that as best I can. I still have a lot of thinning down to go, but it's pre-heat treat, so I'm not worried about that. Um, what I'm gonna do now is actually hand sand it up to around 150, maybe 180 grit. Um, and that's just gonna let me flatten this piece off, make sure the bevels are nice and flat. Okay, it's the next morning. Just got up from bed, had some breakfast, some nice eggs. Always gotta keep that protein up there. Upon further examination of my initial design for this knife, I one noticed that it's an inch longer than the actual design, which is no problem at all. 
bigger is always better. But what I do need to change is this slope right here. So as you can see, it goes very flat out and then it has a very drastic slope down to the tip. My initial design actually has a much more gradual slope starting at about the halfway point in the blade. So I'm gonna go back to the two by 72 grinder. I'm just gonna rip off that material really quick and then we're gonna get on to marking and heat treating. <laughs> All right, profile's fully pulled in. Now we're gonna go on to touch marking it and then we're gonna heat treat it. Okay, I've got my maker's mark put on there. So now this is officially a Macduff Forge original. We're gonna attempt something new here in the heat treat. In a lot of Japanese cutlery, um, there is something called a hamon, and a hamon is basically, it's a, it's, technically it's a differential hardening line. So what it means is that there's harder steel at the edge than there is at the spine. And that's achieved by insulating the spine with some form of clay or cement. Um, in this case, I have refractory cement, which is called satanite. And so I'm going to mix up a little bit of this. I'm going to coat the spine only and make a little pattern on the blade. And then I'll go into the heat treat with it on. And hopefully I'll get that differential hardening line and it'll look really cool. So let's harden this blade. It is time for the most stressful part of the process for me, I think, which is the heat treat. I'm fairly confident in my heat treating abilities with 1095. I just heat it up to its non-magnetic point, which is around a cherry red color, quench it in the preheated oil. Um, and I'm hoping that this hormone's gonna come out. I made it kind of random looking and I'm hoping it's gonna, gonna come out pretty cool. So nothing to it but to do it. Let's go. Preheating the oil. confident that it's hardened just because of the the gray steel that I can see that nice light gray that you see on the blade is a characteristic of martensite which is the hard form of steel but to be very sure I'm gonna file test it if the file skates then it's hard if it digs in then it's not hard and I need to do it again so let's see all right Okay, so the edge is, is hard, which is good. I'm gonna see if the spine is still soft. So I think it is, so I don't know if you can hear this. So try to listen very closely. This is soft steel. This is hard steel. So you can hear there's a difference. This is a lot higher pitched. And this is a lot lower pitched. But that is exactly what I was hoping for. And it also stayed nice and straight in the quench. I didn't have a, have a lot of straightening to do. Any warps that are still in there, I can grind out easily because I left it nice and thick and I have a lot of material to remove. So I'm gonna go into the temper, um, which means relaxing the grain structure so it still retains its hardness, but it also has some flexibility. At this moment, I do see signs of a hormone. I'm gonna try and show you. If you can see, there's a very slight shadow right in there, right there and right there. And I'm hoping that that's a telltale sign of the, that the hormone stuck. And so after the tempo, we're gonna be able to see, um, yeah, either through hand sanding, it'll come out, or we'll go into an etch and uh, etch away the excess steel and show that pattern through the acid. But right now we're gonna go into the temper and I will see you guys in about two hours.